Hi, and welcome to this new video tutorial where I'm gonna talk about MDC, the software by Just Drew for the design of retaining walls. Anyway, don't hesitate to contact us in case you need help for the solution of your cases. Well, let's get started. This is the open window of the software. In Home, we can manage all that concerns the input of the case that we want to analyze. Let's start from the material archive, which includes different types of concrete and steel, with the concerning constitutive laws defined by the standards. Obviously, the user can apply changes to these materials, as well as add new ones. Finally, this section shows the parameters for the execution of the serviceability limit state. From this button, it's possible to define the general data of the problem. First of all, it's necessary to define the wall type. MDC includes a huge choice of types, such as cantilever wall, wall with footing key, or wall on piles, allowing to account for the presence of one, two, or even three rows of piles. Additionally, it's possible to account for also the following types. The basement wall employs the calculation scheme of a cantilever fixed on the top with a support. In this case, it's desirable to refer to the earth pressure at rest. The gravity wall refers to a structure in concrete without reinforcement. In this case, besides the typical verifications for retaining walls, MDC also performs the verification of the contact section wall foundation. This latter is performed to check that the considered section do not undergo tension stresses but only compression. Finally, the possibility to analyze also gabion walls has been recently included. This latter, along with gabion weirs, can be also analyzed using the just true software Gabions and Walls, GDW, whose link is reported in the description of this video. In this example, we will refer to a wall on a double pile row. From this section, we can choose the standards to refer to for the geotechnical and structural verifications. In this example, we choose the Euro codes. Here we can choose the environmental conditions, whereas from here we can choose the theory for the thrust computation. First of all, we can choose between the active thrust or the thrust at rest. In this case, we choose the active thrust. From this menu, we can define if referring to the well-known theory of ranking, where the soil wall friction is not accounted for, or to the method by Mononobbe and Okabe. By choosing this option, the method reduces to the well-known method of Coulomb in case of static analysis. From here, it's instead possible to define the point of application of the seismic thrust. From this section, we can choose the method for the computation of the bearing capacity, in particular referring to the formula of Vesic or Hansen. The software gives also the possibility to exclude some corrective factors for the computation of the bearing capacity. Finally, here we can define some limit values of the safety factors. The software will print in red the calculated safety factors if this will be less than the specified values. At this point, it's possible to define the geometry of the problem. From this button, we can define geometry data and loads. From the panel Wall Geometry, it's possible to assign all data necessary to draw the geometry of the wall. The software allows the definition of a wall of geometry as most generic as possible. By clicking on the different fields, the related graphic representation is highlighted in red in the sketch. In this case, let's suppose that the wall is characterized by an extension equal to 30 meters and a height equal to 5 meters. I would like to point out that, except the extension of the wall, all the other quantities are expressed in centimeters. The wall is characterized by a thickness at the top equal to 50 centimeters and a downstream butter equal to 20 centimeters. The internal face of the wall is vertical, therefore the upstream butter is nil. 
For the foundation, we assume a constant thickness equal to 70 cm. Therefore, we assign the same value for both toe and heel sides, whereas the taper height is nil. Concerning the foundation width, it's equal to 1 meter from the side of the toe, whereas it's 2 meters and half from the side of the heel. If necessary, we can also assign the inclination to the foundation and the foundation wall. Here, instead, we can define the lean mix. From this section, we can assign the data of the footing key when we choose the concerning wall type, whereas from here, we can assign the characteristics of an eventual steam shelf, which could be either upstream or downstream. This section allows to assign steps to the wall geometry, whereas from here, it's possible to account for the presence of eventual counterforts. From this panel, we can assign the load applied on the ground surface, which can be uniform, strip, or trapezoidal. In this case, we apply a strip load with the following values of initial and final abscissa and with a constant intensity of 10 kPa. Here we assign the elevation of the load. The value 0 refers to the ground surface. From this menu, we can choose the type of load, which is a useful information for the combinations of analysis. Finally, for the sake of completeness, it's possible to assign a color to represent the load. From this panel, it's instead possible to assign eventual forces concentrated on the retaining wall. These forces will be accounted for in the equilibrium equations. By clicking on Apply and then OK, we can observe that our geometry starts to take shape, even though it has still to be completed. From this button, it's possible to eventually change the coordinates of the wall, whereas from here, we can define the soil profile. By clicking on this button, the software opens the window shown on the right. The geometry upstream the wall can be subdivided into three parts, characterized by different length and inclination. Specifically, in this case, we assume the following values. For the geometry downstream, we instead assume the default values, but it's obviously possible to choose also other values. From the section backfill, we can change the elevation of the ground surface upstream the wall from the top of the wall. Positive values give rise to a backfill extending above the top of the wall. On the contrary, if we choose a negative value, the wall will be characterized by a higher height than the backfill. In this case, we assume that the backfill has the same elevation of the top of the wall, therefore we use the value 0. At this point, we can define the stratigraphy from the specific button. In this window, it's necessary to assign the parameters of the involved soils, along with the initial and final elevation of the layers and eventual inclinations. In this case, just for time reasons, I'm going to employ some soils already included in the software database, but you can insert the parameters obtained from the geotechnical investigation performed. When we assign the elevations, we should consider that the initial elevation of one layer has to correspond to the final elevation of the previous layer. In this case, we can assume that all layers are horizontal, for the sake of simplicity, and that all soils are dry. Therefore, we don't have to check the option water table. In this condition, the soil permeability will not affect the results. Therefore, we can assign 0 to all layers. From the button piles, it's possible to assign the characteristics of the piles when we choose the concerning type of wall. We can choose between drilled or driven piles. Then, we have to assign diameter and length of the pile. Here, we can choose the modulus of subgrade reaction Ks that we can type manually from the keyboard or we can choose one or those included in the database. We can also specify if Ks is constant or varies with depth. In this field, we can choose the Poisson's ratio, whereas here we can define if the pile is represented sectioned or entirely in the sketch. For the sake of completeness, 
it's also possible to assign a color to the pile. From this menu, we assign the number of investigative verticals. Based on the chosen value, the software automatically calculates the value of the correlation factor for different profiles. This area concerns the geometry about the location of the piles with respect to the foundation. Specifically, we have to define the distance between the pile axis and the foundation edge, the longitudinal spacing, and if the piles are aligned or not, whereas here we can assign an eventual inclination to the piles. Here we can decide which action is considered on the piles. We can choose if only the overturning moment acts on the pile or if it is the resulting moment. In any case, I would like to remind you that what pile is subjected to compression or traction can vary based on this choice. My suggestion is to consider both cases and refer to the worst situation. Finally, here we can define the percentage of load acting on the pile, varying from 70 to 100%. Let's also assume that the wall is supported by a row of anchors, whose properties can be input from this button. It's necessary to choose the drawn wire strands diameter and the ultimate value of the safety factor from the specific menu, as well as assign the correlation factor for different profiles. Then we can assign the tension relaxation coefficient and the grout ultimate pull-out resistance. Instead, from the table, we have to input the geometric and strength characteristics. The H is the distance of the anchor from the wall top. Let's assume that it's 2 meters in this case. Let's assume that the free length is 8 meters and the anchor length is 4 meters. We choose a borehole diameter equal to 10 centimeters whereas the bulb diameter is 12 cm. The anchors are characterized by a spacing of 2 meters and an inclination equal to 15 degrees. Let's assume that the ground anchor friction angle is 20 degrees, whereas the adhesive contribution is nil. At this point, the software automatically calculates a value of the tensile load of the anchor. However, this value can be changed by the user. Let's suppose that the anchor is made up of four drawn wire strands and that the strength has this value. Finally, it's possible to assign a color. From this button, we can assign the information concerning materials and reinforcement. The parameters in this panel refer to the reinforced concrete verification. From this panel, it's instead possible to assign the characteristics of the materials referring to the wall. Let's assume a concrete of class C2835 and steel reinforcement of type B450C from the database before seen. Here we can define some minimal values of the reinforcement. If these values will not be sufficient to satisfy the verifications, they will be automatically modified by the software. Finally, this panel refers to the piles. Let's choose the same material of the wall, specifying that the steel reinforcement is made up of longitudinal bars, but we have also the options to choose a tubular reinforcement. Also here, some minimal values of reinforcement can be assigned. At this point, we can proceed with the computation through the specific panel. From this button, we can open the window from where it's possible to perform the computation. In there on the left, we can manage the load combinations. By default, the software defines the main combinations accounted for from the standard previously selected. However, by right-clicking, the user has also the possibility to add more combinations. For example, in this case we will add the seismic one. For any combination, the concerning tables report the values of the coefficients defined by the standards. Besides, it's also possible to choose which type of verification the software will perform, such as geotechnical, structural or EQU. For the seismic combinations, in which we perform a pseudostatic analysis, 
it's necessary to input also the values of the seismic coefficients, horizontal and vertical, kh and kv, respectively. In this case, let's assume the following values. At this point, just need to use the button computation to perform the analysis. At the end of the analysis, for the wall on piles, the software reports the calculated values of the moments, stresses, and bearing capacity. By clicking on OK, the window is closed and we can inspect with more details the other outputs. This button visualizes the cost estimation of the quantities of steel and concrete in this bar shown on the bottom. The calculation is performed for one meter of the wall. It's also possible to perform the cost estimation online using the free app available at the link indicated in the description. Moreover, we can also perform a global stability analysis from this button, which opens the software slot. Referring to any of the load combinations performed, we can represent the outputs indicated in this menu. For example, we can visualize the pressure in foundation, the unit thrust diagram, the pore water pressures if we are in presence of water, the moment diagram, and the seal reinforcement calculated by the software. The same outputs can be shown also from the specific buttons in this section. Moreover, this button allows to visualize the potential and stable soil wage. In this case, we can observe that the bulb of the anchor is outside of this wedge. Therefore, the frame length has been chosen correctly. From the button reinforcement editor, we can instead apply changes to the reinforcement calculated by the software. To this purpose, just select the reinforcement that you want to change and modify the numerical value in the window on the right. For example, in this case, we choose to employ bars with a diameter of 20 mm instead of the 14 mm bars calculated by the software. In the panel armature list, we can see the reinforcement calculated for any of the sections reported in the sketch or change them manually. For more details about the structural verifications, we can plot the specific report. The different reports can be plotted from the panel output. In this case, I'm gonna plot, for some reason, only the geotechnical report, but in general it's possible to plot all those indicated in this panel. Thank you for watching this video, I will wait for you in the next one. Bye!